Psalm 68, verse 16. Why leap ye, ye high hills? This is the hill which God desires to dwell in. Yea, the Lord will dwell in it forever. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai, so in the holy place. Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. Blessed be the Lord, who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. He that is our, is our God is a God of salvation, and unto God the Lord belong the issues from death. Verse 19, Blessed be the Lord, who daily loadeth us with benefits. Now here's a message for some of us who are in danger of forgetting the blessings of God. And this applies to most people. We live in a day of complaining Christians, complaining people. They're everywhere. You meet them on every hand. They complain about the weather. They complain about prices. They complain about the inequalities among men. They complain about government. They complain about taxes. They complain about uh, legal affairs. And they're always complaining. Now, this is a message for us. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. In other words, every day, every day, he's loading us with benefits, multitudes of blessings and wagon loads of blessings and truck loads of blessings. My wife and I stopped the other night coming out of Georgia where we'd had some meetings and on the way up and not very far from Chattanooga, there's a place where you turn off the main highway and about a city block or two city blocks maybe off the highway there's a truck stop and i've never seen one like that before most of the time you see them right near the highway on the side of the highway this was over uh, a little distance away from the main highway many of you fellows know where it is but i never saw as many trucks in my life on that lot there must have been 35 40 50 i don't know how many great big massive things they were pulling me in one by one just coming in the fellows going in eating and they were standing around, and trucks there were just loaded down with everything you can think of, and there were names on the side of food and furniture and electrical appliances and different things. They were there. Now, that's what I have when I think of what the Lord has done for me. I've got wagon loads. I've got truck loads of blessings. God has been good, hasn't he? And to all of us, we have to say the same thing. Tonight, I want you to take three points. Number one, first, review your blessings. Review your blessings. The song you heard a moment ago. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. Now think of the blessings of the past. Your salvation. The gift of God. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. You, he gave you salvation. He sent his son to die for you. And your salvation is the foundation for all the blessings of life. Think of your salvation. Don't get away from it. Daily think about it. Count your blessings. Again, uh, the blessing of prayer, answering prayer. God answers prayer. Here's the word of God. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And Jesus said, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, there's no way to compute the worth of prayer to the individual Christian. Thank God for prayer. Praise God that you can pray about every need of life, about, about every concern of your heart, you can talk to God. Then there's the joy of serving Him. Count your blessings. In the family of God, we have a part in service. Now, that's not work, that's joy. And no matter how you may add it up, it is joy. And the child of God should so live that he rejoices in going to church, rejoices in visitation Thursday night, rejoices in playing in the orchestra or in singing the choir or in ushering or whatever it may be rejoicing the joy of serving him and what a joy it is count your blessings the past again there's a blessing of guidance in the past he has guided you he has guided me divine guidance in the dark hours of life he said i will guide thee with mine eye now what a blessing this has been in the hours when things were uncertain when you were not sure which way to go what to do when the way seemed dangerous and dark and foreboding, then you could pray and say, Oh, dear God, guide me, and he would guide you. He unfailingly will give his guidance. Again, here's a blessing of divine comfort in the time of sorrow. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Here's a comforting promise of God given to us about our loved ones. 
And we find this divine comfort from him. And we've had it in the past. I've had it over and over again. And so have you. And we, our people have it now in this hour when many are going through a veil of, of sorrow. Then uh, here's the matter of the call of God for full-time service on my part. And 52 years ago, uh, when he called me into his service, I wouldn't trade place with anybody in the whole wide world. I don't have much, but brother, I wouldn't, I wouldn't swap with anybody, any preacher, any evangelist, any president of a nation, any king of a country. I wouldn't trade with anybody in the world for the thing that God's given me. I'd rather be here than anywhere in the world. I'd rather be in this place of service and I'll thank God for the 52 years he's given me in the, in the preaching ministry, in, in serving him. This is the joy of, of my heart. And we should all have that feeling. And his, his call to you, if God has called you, then to do what God says. Well, we can take the blessings of the past when you review. Then the blessings of the present when you look around you, what you have now. Here's the peace of God that passeth all understanding. And you can have it, and many of you do have it. Some of you do not, but that's your fault. God promises it to you. He said, my peace I give unto you, you can have it. And again, here's the present strength which is yours. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And God will give you that strength that you need for today. And again, the indwelling Holy Spirit is with you to comfort you and to guide you. He's there now if you're saved. If you're not saved, he's not there. But if you're saved, he's there. And he's there to guide you and to strengthen you and to illuminate your way and your mind regarding the things of God. And so wait upon him. Now review your blessings. Review your blessings. Take a lot of time. Think it over. Uh, not just in this hour, but think of all that God has done for you. Review your blessings. Secondly, rejoice in your blessings. The Apostle Paul said, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Philippians 4 and verse 4. Rejoicing is a need in this day. Many people do not rejoice. We have racial unrest. We have international unrest. We have domestic unrest. We have personal unrest. Unrest on every hand. And we see it. And people are not rejoicing. They're complaining. They're finding fault. Nothing pleases them. Nothing is right. They're always complaining. Now, it's hard to find a contented person, a rejoicing person. Now, Paul was such a one. He rejoiced even in a jail cell. He said, Rejoice in the Lord. He was incarcerated for the preaching of the Word of God. He was shut away from the lanes of travel which he enjoyed. He was hindered from spreading the Word which he wanted to do and, and was called of God to do. He doubtless suffered physically, but in spite of all of this, he said, Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say, Rejoice. Now, review your blessings. Think back over what God has done for you. Now, rejoice. In the blessings of God. Paul rejoiced in his salvation. Philippians chapter 3. He told about what he was saved from. What he came out of to be a child of God. And Paul rejoiced in the present opportunity. Here's what he said. From a jail cell. He said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. Reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Now what's he saying? He's saying, from this place, my jail cell, I'm rejoicing. I'm looking forward. I press toward the mark. From this moment, I'm pressing for forward uh, toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What's he saying? Rejoice and press on. Rejoice in the advantage of the present opportunity. Whatever that may be. May be hard. It may be a prison cell. It may be a sick bed. It may be an operation. It may be financial reverses. It might be everything that you can think of. But my dear friend, he loads us with blessings. And review your blessings, all that God has done for you. And then rejoice in what God has given you at this present moment. Just being here in the house of God tonight. Rejoice in that. I'd rather be here than the finest hospital in the world. I'd rather be here than standing or sitting or talking or praying even in the finest funeral home in America. I'd rather be here in the house of God. And that's where God has put us for this hour. What do we have tomorrow? We don't know that's in his hands. But we leave it with him. He loads us with blessings that we might be a blessing to others. And as you think of your life, how can you be a blessing? Live above reproach. Every one of you live above reproach. No man liveth to himself and no man dieth to himself. Every person has an influence. And live above reproach. Be a blessing.
Okay. Be a blessing. Pray for others. God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. It's a sin not to pray for others. A sin. Again, witness to others. Here's the biggest thing that you can do. And God wants you to do it. And you can be a blessing in this present moment. As you think of the past, that's not enough. Review. Now rejoice. And rejoice and do what God says in this hour. Now we've given two thoughts. Review and rejoice. But I want you to write down number three. Reclaim your blessings. Reclaim your blessings. Some lose their blessings. And some of you tonight would confess to it. You'd say, Brother Robertson, I do not have the blessings upon my life that I once had. I'm not as happy in Christ as I once was. That's your fault, not God's. And he tells you how to reclaim your blessings. How to get them back again. And if somehow you feel that things are not the same, and tonight there's an emptiness in your own heart, and a longing for something that you don't have now, and God says, I want to bless you. I want to help you. I want to bring you back into my full fellowship. You're saved. You're a child of God. But I want you to have full joy and fellowship and walking with me. You see, my friends, blessing dis blessings disappear when sin comes in. God's eternal blessings do not abide upon the heart where you walk in the way of sin. And when you bring sin into your life, then, my friends, say goodbye to the blessings that you desire so much. David was a man of God, a man after God's own heart. But when David, in the midst of his prosperity, with a kingdom at his feet, with armies at his touch, with all human power that a man could desire, David played the fool and looked at a woman and committed sin with her. And the blessings went out the window. Blessings disappear when sin comes in. And Psalm 53 gives his prayer for pardon and for renewal. And God brought him back. But it was a painful experience. And it will be for you, but you better face it. And if you want the blessing of God upon your life, then come and pray with David, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And let me know again the presence of God. Now watch out for sin. Sin will rob you of his blessings. He wants to bless you. He will bless you. He's waiting to bless you. But he cannot bless you. Unless you're standing in the place where he can do so. There's a spot. You've heard me say it over and over again. There's a spot where the blessings of God will come down upon you. But get out of that spot. You miss his richest blessing. And you fail. You've got to be in the place where God can bless your life. Now sin will put you out of that place. Will rob you of blessings. And you can rejoice in what you've had in the past. And you can review the whole thing. But you come to this moment. I've had many preachers come to me and say, Oh, Brother Robertson, I've had such a great ministry. God used me. Back in the church in certain town. Had a big church and hundreds got saved. I baptized people. But today... Ah, today something has gone wrong. The blessings have disappeared. I could name at this very single moment of time the name of a pastor, a great man. He was a mighty preacher. He could stand with a Bible in his hand and preach and people listen. They got blessed and souls were saved. He had the joy of baptizing many, many hundreds of people in the church where he pastored. But one day he played the big fool. He let his eyes look upon a woman not his wife. He lost everything he had. Lost his church. Lost his reputation. His people turned away. The church folded up. The whole thing failed. I just came out of Texas. Along at one or two o'clock in the morning. Yes, the morning, whatever it was, I was there. Talked to somebody about a famous church of the city in Fort Worth. At one time, the largest Sunday school in America. Do I need to name the church? I don't have to do it. Nor do I need to name the pastor. Nor do I need to uh, tell you what happened. Today, they have less than 200 in Sunday school. Used to be bigger than Highland Park and bigger than any church in the nation almost. 
They sold their building. They're meeting in a little storefront building now. The blessings of God taken away, gone from them. And in your life as an individual Christian, the same thing happens. The wretchedness of sin. Sin steals and sin deprives and sin robs you of what God wants you to have. Now, blessings disappear when sin comes in. Again, blessings are lost when we do not obey our Lord. Blessings are lost. For example, you better obey God in tithing. If you don't do it, you're going to lose the blessing of God. Now take my word for it. And if God says tithe, and if he doesn't say tithe, then I don't know the Bible. But if God says tithe, I better tithe or I'm going to suffer. When God speaks, and you fail to obey him, whatever it may be in life, I mentioned the tithing thing as one point of it, you're going to fail. Monday night, I preached a sermon out in Texas, and Tuesday morning, a fellow came up to me. I don't know how big he is. He must weigh 275, 300. Wife stood there by his side. He said, last night, he said, your message just about ruined me. He said, I couldn't sleep. He said, I was troubled. He said, I made money. I've got a job. I've got everything. But he said, I'm out of God's will. He said, years ago, God called me to preach. But I've never preached one sermon. He said, I've been running from God all of this time. His wife stood there by his side and said, that's right. Said he's never happy. He's never happy. He never seems to enjoy what God has done for him. You see, my friends, blessings disappear when you do not obey the Lord. Again, blessings are lost when we are unfaithful. Unfaithful. You better write it down. I don't care who you are. You turn your back on God's house on worship. You turn your back upon the word of God in prayer. You turn your back upon the ordinary things of the Christian life and say, well, that's for other people I can do as I want to. No, you, you can do as you want to, but you'll pay the price. The blessings of God are lost and disappear when we're unfaithful to him, to the Lord, to his church. Again, blessings are lost through ingratitude. How many of us are ungrateful? How many of us fail to stop and thank God for all that he's done for us? Oh, God, help us to think tonight. And here's the word of God that speaks to us and tells us what we ought to do and what we ought to say. Blessed be the Lord, which daily, daily loadeth us with benefits or with blessings. Every day it's done. Now reclaim your blessings. Review them. Rejoice in them. Reclaim them. Reclaim your blessings by confession and forsaking of sin. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse John 1, 9. Reclaim your blessing by submission of your life to his will. Father, thy will be done. That's what my friend should be saying out in Texas. But when he walked away from me after said I was so troubled last night, he said I'm still troubled. But he still hadn't broken down. He said, I've got a big business. I'm making big money. Big money. What can I do? I said, turn your back on the whole thing and live for God and serve God. By submission to his will. Again, thirdly, reclaim your blessing by the close study of the word of God. The word of God brings blessings. And the Christian will backslide when he ignores the word of God. Read your Bible. Study your Bible. Let the Bible speak to you. And reclaim the blessings of God. Again, reclaim your blessings by return to the place of prayer. It's not easy. Get back on your knees. Satan will try to turn you away from prayer. But the Bible says pray without ceasing. Pour out your heart to God. Come back to God. Return to God. Reclaim the blessing by faithfulness and worship and giving. Make a resolution and stand by it. I made resolutions when I was 18 years old. I'm still carrying out today. I made some resolutions when I was 14 when I got saved. I've never forsaken in all of these years. I still remember them. Make your resolutions and be faithful, uh, faithful unto God. Return to the place of worship and giving. And then, my dear friend, reclaim your blessing by concern for the souls of men. Say, oh, God, help me to have a new concern, a new compassion for lost people that I might bring them to the Savior, that I might have a part in this vital ministry of our Savior that I might do all I can. Reclaim your blessings. 
Now, I'm sure there must be other things, but I put out six of them. Reclaim your blessings by confession and forsaking of sin. Watch it. Get it out. Come on, get it out. Folks lie about this matter of sin. Men in offices lie about it. Women lie about it. I've had some to come to the front and confess on their knees in church service I've had. What they've been doing, how they've been thinking. Reclaim your blessing, reclaim your blessing by submission to his will. Reclaim your blessing by close study of his word. Reclaim your blessings by return to a place of prayer. Reclaim your blessings by faithfulness in worship and giving. Reclaim your blessing by concern for the souls of men. And say, oh God, this is my determination to do what you would have me to do. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits. Back to the place God wants to bless you, wants to bless me. And if I'm not having blessings, it is my fault. It is not God's fault. He wants to bless my life and will bless my life. Let him have his way. And pray that God will use you to bring others to the Savior. Pray that God might use your life as he blesses you, not to be selfishly enjoyed, but a life to be extended to others around you that they might be blessed and brought to Christ also. Hyman Appleman tells the story. A revival is in progress. The evangelist did his best to get the people to visit, to invite the lost people to the services, and few responded to his words. Then there came a holiday in the midst of that revival campaign, and a barber in the town with the several of his friends went on a fishing trip. On the fishing trip, the boat overturned, drowning the barber. His body was lost somewhere in the waters. Everything in town stopped. Hyman said the town stopped, and the lake was searched for the body of the dead barber. They hired a diver. Back in that day, Hyman said $100 a day. They paid him just to go out and see if he could find the body. He searched, but after, it took four days before he discovered the body of, of the barber. They had the funeral service. And as the people slowly walked by the coffin, had the service in the church. The barber was an unsaved man, had never gone to church, never confessed his faith in Christ. But as the people came by, someone heard the pastor whispering as he stood near the casket. And he whispered this, O oh, Sam, if, if these people had cared as much for your soul as they do for your dead body, you wouldn't be in hell now. I can almost hear a heartbroken preacher say that. Oh, Sam, of these people coming by in the church, a man who had never gone to church, never made a profession of faith, never accepted Christ, if they cared as much for your soul as they did and for your dead body when you were lost in the waters and as they do now when they march by, you wouldn't be in hell now if we cared. It's one thing to be concerned about others, about their welfare, as we've done tonight in our prayer meeting, it's something else to be concerned about their soul's salvation. God help us, let's bow in prayer. Now tonight as you sit there, I want you to review your blessings. I want you to rejoice in your blessings. I want you to reclaim your blessings. Now let God have his way. Some of you tonight are saying, Brother Robertson, God blessed me in the past. But things haven't been right in the present. In the near past, I've been away from God's side. I want to come forward tonight. I want to reclaim the blessings of God. I know he wants to bless me. And I want to come down the, the aisles tonight to the front. Some of you may be Baptist people want to join with us by letter. Transfer a membership. We urge you to come. And as you come to say, Lord, take my life and use it in this church. Some of you may be here tonight who are saved. You know you're saved, but you never follow the Lord in believer's baptism. You've been lying about it. You've been hiding it. You've been covering up. You need to face it now. I'm going to obey my Lord and claim his blessing for my life. I'll do what he says. It may be some of you have been cheating on God. You haven't been tithing. And you know it. You know it's wrong. You want to make it right. You don't have to tell me about it, but you can tell God. But it may help if you'd come down the aisle 
and say, I want to rededicate my life. And in your heart, you know why you're here. I'm going to be a tither. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to do what God says. And then some of you in the building maybe have never been saved. You may be church members, but you're not saved. You've never been born again. We beseech you now to hear the message of Christ. Jesus said, He that believeth in me hath everlasting life. Repent. Repent of the sin of unbelief. Receive Christ as your Savior. Do it tonight. Whatever it may be, let God have his way. Slip out of your place up on the balcony, downstairs, down to the front. I trust many of you will come and say, Oh, I want the blessings of God upon my life. And I come tonight to give myself to him that he might bless me and use me and make me to be what he wants me to be. Father, have your way for Jesus' sake. Let's stand pleased with bowed heads.